Hey guys, you 100 here, continuing King of the Ring month with another King of the Ring review. Here's my review of King of the Ring 1996. So, yeah, this was a, I'd say this was a good show right here, yeah. It's mostly due to three matches on the show that were really good, yeah. There were three really good to great matches on the show, yeah. Everything else is not really too great. Alright, yeah. <laughs> Everything else in the show besides the three matches really were pretty bad, yeah. But yeah, thanks to those three really good to great matches, I'd say the show was pretty good. Alright, yeah, and this was the first King of the Ring show to act, to only have two rounds of the tournament this night on the show rather than three. And, uh, yeah, I, I kinda like it better this way, yeah, because, yeah, with only two rounds of the tournament rather than three, yeah, you can actually have, like, more same matches on the show that were really, like, that involved rivalries rather than just, just, like, the tournament matches where it's just, like, two guys just randomly going against each other that don't really have any rivalry at all, yeah. I kind of like it better this way with only two rounds in the show rather than three. So yeah, it was a good show, mostly due to three matches. So yeah, we just get right into the show. All right. So show kicked off with two semifinal matches in the tournament. First up had Stone Cold versus Wild Man Mark Merrow. And yeah, this was a really, really good, great match right here. Yeah, really good. But here, yeah. Stone Cold was, like, dominating Mark Merrow for a majority of this match. Yeah, Mark Merrow did get in some offense early on in the match, but then, yes, yeah, and eventually Stone Cold was just in control for, like, basically the entire match, yeah. He was just going for everything he could onto Mark Merrow. Oh, so, yeah, all his, like, the... He went with, like, the loose edge press on Mark Merrow. Merrow, and, yeah, he, they were brawling on the outside of the ring. And when Stone Cold threw Mark Merrow over the top rope down the floor... And yeah, Stone Cold exposed the concrete floor and just dropped Mark Merrill right down onto the concrete. And yeah, you could actually hear the splat and the impact when Mark Merrill hit the concrete, yeah. And Stone Cold was just beating down Mark Merrill for the majority of this match, yeah. And then Mark Merrill eventually did, did make a comeback, yeah. He was just trying to do whatever he could to Stone Cold. He got like a... He at one point, Mark Merrill like a Hurricane Rana in Stone Cold, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Stone Cold got in a Boston Crab on Mark Merrill a couple of times in the match, yeah. And then at one point, Mark Merrill had Stone Cold in like a headlock, and then Stone Cold like, like just, like, nailed Mark Merrill with like a modified version of a stunner, yeah. And then, like, Stone Cold backdrop Mark Merrill, like, th throw her chest first into the top rope, yeah. And then eventually Stone Cold got a stunner in on Mark Merrill, and, yeah, Stone Cold got the win. So, yeah, it was a really, really good to great match. I give it four stars. And then next up, we had the other semifinal match. Vader versus Jake the Snake Roberts. This was not good at all. Seriously, I mean, this only lasts like three and a half minutes, and yeah. It, this was just this terrible, I mean, yeah. Jake the Snake Roberts really had no business being in a wrestling ring by that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was already over the age of 40 by this point, yeah. Yeah, he really shouldn't have gotten back into the ring, I mean, seriously, I mean, yeah, this just wasn't his time anymore. Yeah. And Vader was, like, dominating Jake Roberts with, like, body presses and running splashes, yeah. And, yeah, Jake Roberts had, like, a swinging knee lift onto Vader. And, yeah, Jake Roberts tried to go for a DDT on Vader, but Vader, like, backed Jake Roberts into the corner, and he tried to go for a short-arm clothesline, but Roberts was able to counter it. And then he nailed Vader with a short-arm clothesline of his own. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, at the end of this thing, Jake the Snake Roberts tried to 
hit Vader with the DET, but yeah, and he connected with the DET, but as he did, Vader like grabbed the referee and pulled him, and yeah, the referee then fell down with the DET, yeah, and then the referee called for the bell, and yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts won by disqualification, yeah, this DQ win really didn't make any sense at all, I mean, seriously, why would Vader actually pull the referee when he was in this kind of situation? So, yeah, and yeah, like I said, Jake the Snake Roberts won the match, but afterwards, Jim Cornette and Vader attacked Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah, Vader, like, charged Jake Roberts in a corner, and then he hit, got a Vader bomb. He got a couple of Vader bombs on Jake Roberts, and yeah, that, yeah, it injured Jake Roberts' ribs, and yeah, yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts later on went to the finals with her ribs, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was really was not a good match. One star. Then next up we had the tag team title match. Smoking Guns defending against the Godwins. This really was not very good either. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. The Smoking Guns had the advantage early on when Billy Gunn distracted Phineas and Bart Gunn was then attacked him from behind. And yeah, Gunn wins dominated for the most part of the match. Sonny was also trying to distract them. She was like broke turned on the Godwins recently and yeah, she joined up with the smoking guns. Yeah, and she was trying to distract them a couple of times, yeah. And yeah, really was not too good in the end. At the end, the Smoking Guns got the win when Bart hit Phineas with his boot, and then that allowed Billy to roll up Phineas and get the pin. So yeah, Smoking Guns won. Like I said, it really was not a very good, you know, like a, a star and a half. Then next up we had Jerry Lawler versus The Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, Jerry Lawler was like going around with the fans for like five minutes before the match and yeah he was up on the like where the th king of the ring throne was yeah and he grabbed the scepter and brought that with him to the ring yeah and yeah he was just like toying around with the fans for like five minutes and yeah it was got it was just so getting so tedious and dumb and yeah this was a terrible horrible match seriously I mean Warriors run in 1996 was just complete crap. I mean, I talked about the horrible match he had with Triple H at WrestleMania 12. Yeah, this was just as bad. This was horrible. Seriously, it only lasted like four minutes. And yeah, Jerry Lawler nailed Warrior with the scepter, and yeah, he was going for just using a bunch of heel tactics in the match, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, Jerry Lawler hit Warrior with a pile driver, but Warrior no sold it just like he did the Pedigree at WrestleMania 12. And then yeah, he hit Jerry Lawler with a bunch of clotheslines, and then he hit him with a running shoulder block. And then yeah, Warrior pinned Jerry Lawler for the win. Match sucked, dud. Then next up had Undertaker versus Mankind. This was a really good match, yeah. Undertaker vs. Mankind was an awesome feud, yeah. Yeah, this was a really good match, yeah. Undertaker started by attacking Mankind with, like, a flying clothesline, and then later on he got an old school on Mankind. And then it later went to the outside, and Mankind nailed Undertaker with a chair. Well, he tried to hit Undertaker with a chair anyway, but Undertaker kicked it into Mankind's face. And yeah, and then yeah, while, later on while Paul Bear was distracting the referee, Undertaker then hit Mankind with the chair, yeah. And Undertaker hit a big boot on Mankind and he tried to go for a tombstone, but Mankind slipped out of it and hit a swinging neck breaker on Undertaker. And Mankind tried to go for the mandible claw, Undertaker was able to block it. It. And then he later on went back to the outside, and then Mankind smashed his elbow on Undertaker when Undertaker was against the steel steps. And Mankind tried to hit Undertaker with a diving elbow drop from the ring apron 
under the floor, but Undertaker was able to block the move with a steel chair. Oh yeah. And then yeah, Mankind eventually hit Undertaker with a pile driver. And then Mankind grabbed the urn from Paul Bear and he tried to hit Undertaker with it, but Paul Bear then snatched the urn back right before Mankind could use it. And then yeah, Mankind then got another mandible claw on Undertaker. And Paul Bear tried to hit Mankind with the urn, but Mankind like pulled Undertaker in, in the way and yeah. Paul Bear accidentally hit Undertaker with the urn. And then Mankind then got the Mandible Claw and Undertaker again, and yeah, Undertaker was just passed out, and yeah, referee just called for the bell, and yeah, Mankind won the match by TKO. So yeah, great match and an awesome rivalry, yeah. And I'm gonna get to their, I'm gonna get to the other match they had at King of the Ring from 1998 in their Hell in a Cell match. Actually, yeah, don't worry, I'll get to that when I do. Yeah, that's also another great match. Yeah, this is, was a really good match, yeah. Three and a half stars. Then next up we had the Intercontinental Championship match, Goldust defending against Ahmed Johnson. Oh boy, this was bad. And this lasted 15 minutes, I mean this was just way, way too long. Yeah. And I'm just gonna make a long story short here. Ahmed Johnson basically dominated this match, it sucked, and yeah, Ahmed Johnson won the match and he got the title. So yeah, it was just a really terrible match. It's not like Ahmed Johnson was even really that good during his time in the WWF, yeah. I give it a star and a quarter. And then there was like a little promo with Brian Pillman. Yeah, Brian Pillman came out to the ring. And yeah, this was recently when he signed with the WWF, yeah. And yeah, Br Brian Pillman just came out to ringside, cut a little promo, saying like he was like gonna dominate the entire WWF, yeah. He was just kind of rambling off for a few minutes. And then we had the King of the Ring final, Stone Cold versus Jake Snake Roberts, yeah. Stone Cold wrestled this ma match with like over 15 stitches in his mouth, because yeah, his mouth was bleeding pretty bad after the match with Mark Merrill. And yeah, as I said, Jake Roberts wrestled this match with injured ribs, yeah. This really was not that good of a final. I mean, it only lasted like four and a half minutes. Stone Cold was targeting Jake the Snake Roberts' ribs in the match. Yeah, just going for anything he could to target the ribs. Yeah, he like nailed him in the corner at, in his ribs a couple of times. Yeah. Ribs, yeah. Yeah, he was stomping on his ribs. Yeah, just yeah. Stone Cold was just targeting Jake Roberts' ribs in this match. Then Gorilla Monsoon at one point came out to the ring. He was asking Jake if he wanted to continue the match, and Jake said yes. Jake tried to make a comeback. Heck yeah. And yeah, he tried to go for a DDT on Stone Cold, but Stone Cold once again nailed Jake Roberts in his ribs, yeah. And then eventually Stone Cold got a stunner on Jake Roberts, and Stone Cold got the win, and Stone Cold became King of the Ring. And this was, this was really the first King of the Ring that actually was able to create a, st a future star of the company, yeah. When, yeah, like, when Bret Hart won King of the Ring, yeah, yeah, it's like, he was already the WWF champion before that, yeah, so yeah, like, it didn't really necessarily make him, like, a big star since he was kind of already a star by becoming WWE champion before, but yeah, when he won King of the Ring, it was like, kind of told you that he was would be able to stay in the main event, and yeah, just like, his, yeah, it just like wasn't over him, and yeah, when Owen Hart won King of the Ring, yeah, he, his rivalry with Bret Hart continued, and yeah, he got that, he was in the title match at SummerSlam, but yeah, afterwards, nothing really happened with him, and yeah, we know what happened with Mabel, nothing, he was a terrible king of the ring, yeah, but Stone Cold, he was really like the first, like, that mid-carter at the time to become king of the ring, and then he eventually would rise to main event status, so yeah, this was the first time the king of the ring tournament really did that for someone, and yeah, we had the coronation of Stone Cold's king of the ring, Stone Cold was being interviewed by Doc Hendricks, or Michael Hayes, whatever you want to call him, yeah. And this was really the birth of Austin 316, yeah. This was the first time Stone Cold used oh, the Austin 316 phrase. And yeah, yeah, and yeah, he was just saying that when the time comes, he 
would be the next WWF champion, yeah, but that didn't happen for like a year and a, until a year and a half later, but yeah, like I said, yeah, this was the first King of the Ring tournament that really created a future star, so yeah, 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 I praise it for that, but the match itself really wasn't that good, I give it like a star and a half. And then we have the main event for the WWF Championship, Shawn Michaels defending against the British Bulldog. Originally, Mr. Perfect was made the special guest referee for it, but then Gorilla Monsoon then decided to make him a special outside enforcer for the match, yeah. And this was another really good to great match, I mean, yeah, Shawn Michaels and British Bulldog, these guys are really great workers and great wrestlers, yeah. It was a really great match, it was a really great back and forth match between the two of them, yeah. Yeah, just some really good moves. Lots of good stuff on the outside, like Shawn Michaels, like hit a Hurricane Rana at one point on Bridge Bulldog outside of the ring, and then yeah, Jim Cornette tried to attack Shawn Michaels. Michaels, but then Shawn Michaels grabbed Jim Cornette tennis racket and nailed Jim Cornette with a racket. Yeah, and at one point like Jake. No, uh, not Jake, sorry. British Bulldog, like, hoisted Shawn Michaels over his head and then just dropped him to the outside of the ring. Yeah. At one point, while the referee was, was, like, distracted with Jose Lothario, Shawn Michaels' manager, British Bulldog then suplexed Shawn Michaels on the floor. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, it was a really good back and forth match, really good moves. There was the Hurricane Run on, yeah, Bulldog hit a flying forearm splash and a diving elbow drop. Well, no. Shawn Michaels hit that on Bridge Bulldog. I'm not sorry. Yeah. Shawn Michaels hit, like, flank forearm smash and a diving elbow drop. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, like I said, it was a really good back and forth match by both both guys. Guys did really good in this match. Yeah. At one point, like, yeah, Shawn Michaels attempted to hit Bulldog with a hurricane runner, but Bulldog then, like, countered into a sit down power bomb. Yeah. Yeah, there were, like, some points where, like, Mr. Perfect was also up on the ring apron, but he was still, like, trying to officiate from, like, the outside of the ring, yeah. And, yeah, there was, yeah, there was a superplex in the match, yeah. And, yeah, at the end, Shawn Michaels hit his sweet chin music on the British Bulldog, and he went for the pin, and both Earl Hebner and Mr. Perfect I count pinfall, but then Owen Hart, who was a commentator on that night, yeah, he then like pulled Mr. Perfect out of the ring and prevented him from completing the count. But Earl Hebner completed the count, and yeah, Shawn Michaels and won the match. And afterwards, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog like attacked Shawn Michaels, and then Ahmed Johnson came out, tried came to Shawn Michaels' aid, and then later then came out and attacked Ahmed Johnson, and yeah. Bulldog, Owen Hart, and Vader were just, tri just beating down Shawn Michaels and Ahmed Johnson, and then yeah, had Ultimate Warrior coming out and made the save for Shawn Michaels and Ahmed Johnson. So yeah, it was a really, really good to great match. I give that four stars also. So overall, the show I give it a 7.25 out of 10. Yeah, had three really great matches: Stone Cold and Mero, Undertaker, Mankind, and Shawn Michaels and Bulldog. Yeah. Yeah, everything else, like I said, really was not that great, especially, like, Roberts and Vader, Walt, Jerry Lawler and Ultimate Warrior, yeah, tag title match, Intercontinental ma title match, yeah, a lot of the other stuff really sucked, but yeah, three really great, good to great matches on the show, and yeah, I would say this, yeah, thanks to those three matches, this turned out being a good show, so, yeah. Alright, so that does it for my review of King of the Ring 1996. Hope you guys enjoyed. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.